There are only two things that always put a smile on my face. Never having to ever go back to Nam again and spunk. For too long, I've lived the spunkless life. But today we're gonna show how you can kind of add a little spunk to your guitar playing. We're gonna do something in the people's key of 2020, which is the key of D, and it's gonna sound like this. So we only have three chords, but I think when it comes down to spunk, it's not just about playing A major, G major, D major, or an open position, A, G, D. I think it's about knowing what you can add to kind of give it a little playfulness. And that's what spunk is to me. Please tell us uh, if you have any different definitions of spunk. But the way I was raised, spunkiness is the sound that you just heard, okay? So essentially we have three chords. We have A major, G major, and D major. D major seven. Okay, so for the first one I'm playing an A, like this where I'm buying the fifth fret, ring finger seven on the A string, middle finger six on the G string, and leaving the D string open to make it like an A7 chord. All right, and then what I'm thinking of, when this is the, the five chord in the progression, again, this is in the key of D, right? So D, E, F sharp, G, A. A is the five chord, dominant seven, we're gonna kind of use that and utilize that to add a little bit of extra spunk, a little razzmatazz. And now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna jump into a very familiar shape, which is something that you should always know. So if anytime you find yourself on the dominant seven chord in whatever key, again, our root note is the fifth fret of the Louis string, two frets higher, this is where minor pentatonic exists and thrives, waiting for you to do stuff with, okay? So this is essentially the B minor, minor pentatonic shape, which we're gonna to add to this kind of spunky chord already, all right? So 7, 10, 7, 9, 7, 9, 7, 9, 7, 10, 7, 10. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna focus on this right here. Double stopping, all right? Double stopping through minor pentatonic is the, the classic sound of spunk, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the ninth fret on the D and G string, play them together, add a little razzmatazz, which is 2020's word for vibrato, and then do the same thing on the seventh fret, okay? so. So we have the A7 chord, just like that. Instead of just playing A7, it's A7, like that. You can even come all the way from here if you wanna play open A7. This is kind of a good connection to make. And then the next chord we're gonna make is G major seven or just G major, however you wanna play it. The voicing I'm gonna use is root note, third fret on the low E string, ring finger, fourth fret on the D string, pinky fourth fret on the G string, middle finger, third fret on the B string. Okay, now we could kind of do the same thing as before and get that, but we're going out of the key. So what I want to do, I want to take notes from right here. The exact same kind of shape double step wise, but on the A and the D string, seventh fret, A and D, fifth fret, A and D. However you want to kind of play it, but. So I almost have kind of like a, a melody right here with the A7, then the G, and it kind of plays off of each other, right? As any spunky activity would do, you know what I'm saying? So we've got that. Now we're gonna go home to the one chord, which is D major, D major seven, root note fifth fret on the A string, ring finger seven D, middle finger six G, pinky, 7B. And then after that, I'm gonna have a whole kind of space for another chord anywhere inside that minor pentatonic thing. Any minor pentatonic lick, just YouTube minor pentatonic licks, and there's probably like 100 million videos that are gonna show up. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna double stop through that scale again. Maybe something like that where, again, I'm just thinking in minor pentatonic, and I'm going seven to nine. The first double stop, I'm gonna get seven D and G, and then just hammer on to nine D. Classic double stop spunky move right there. And then go to G and B, seven, nine. Razzmatazz, back to seven, so. All right, so we can have three chords, and then something that we can do to pair with each chord. So again, A7. 
G set major seven, D major seven. We can even kind of do different variations of that. Again, it's not about just learning that. It's about connecting the one chord in any key. Again, let's say we're in a different key. Let's say we're in the key of E. It's relative minor is gonna be whatever happens to be in that next shape down. Right there, okay? So you don't even have to know the names of the notes, it's super helpful to do so. But when you have an E, that C sharp, one is right there that you can kind of take double stops from. E minor, or E major seven. Then it's five chord. It's four chord. key, A7, G. You don't even have to go to the next thing. Now what that is, is using different chord voicings to kind of supplement your playing and spunk it up a little bit, right? So at its core, we really have just A7, G, D, D, all right? But let's say that second bar of D, we just want to go A7, gonna stay on the G. D. That's just the same chord voicing in different spots. Another D major seven voicing, an easier one, is just holding down the second fret, G, B, and E. I'm getting the open D string too. And then we can slide this 12 frets higher because that's past the active. Anything that you do, you can mirror over the 12th fret. So, it's good to kind of know different chord voicings because you can use them in kind of like a spunky lead atmosphere, right? So a couple different examples. A7, G major seven, D major seven. A7, stay there. G major seven, D. Slide it back. So just a couple different options of what you can do. And I really think that making the connections of a chord and something that you can kind of do melodically, whether you consider that lead playing or just expanding upon your rhythm playing is an important thing to try, okay? So this is just one example. Any of the other chords in the key of D are gonna work. I just really think that it's excellent practice to start expanding outside of chords you already know and connecting them with other shapes, whatever those shapes may be. So thanks for checking it out. Uh, shout out to my cousin for hosting me in Studio B out in LA with her ridiculous Nash Stratocaster that is way better than any guitar that I have. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks.